In this video, the journey on our own continues. We depart Bodrum and Turkey for Kos, Greece, and we sort out our own check-in. No agents. Heading out of Kos, we get a beautiful little harbour all to ourselves. We were the only people here. We check out the communist movement in Greece, try and learn a little bit there, and we enjoy our first Greek, traditional Greek, fish meal. Enjoy. And as always, here we are again in the Aegean Sea, just to the east inside of the Mediterranean. And we're starting our trip today out of Bodrum. And that's the last place in Turkey we'll see, heading over to Nisos Kos. From Nisos Kos, we're going to head uh, to the southwest, find this absolutely beautiful bay to stay in. And then from there, heading towards Santorini via uh, Nifi. And that's just a beautiful little island. From there, just a short hop across to Santorini, the old volcanic caldera. Famous place in the Mediterranean. Absolutely beautiful place. Um, weather around here can be a little bit choppy, um, quite windy, um, but nothing that Awanui NZ cannot cope with. So what have we got there? 110 miles. Morning, um, pretty windy. We decided to spend another night in Bodrum because um, it was pretty windy last night and about a metre swells. Um, we didn't really want to hang around at the anchorage and we've got to go side on to the customs pier so just a little bit nervous about that so we thought blow it we've had a big day we're staying on the marina so um, early the next morning and um, probably even a little bit more windy but um, we're going to look at heading off um, had a good night's sleep so I'm just going to pop round to the refueling pier which is also where the customs pier is and just assess uh, what the wind is like it's uh, blow it'll be blowing off the pier so it makes it a little bit more tricky getting in um, so we'll have to use a springer um, to hold us in while we get the tail line on um, and then I can also look out into um, the sea which is a um, area just off the coastline here and just see how lumpy the water is as well um, our trip over to Kos in Greece is only about 45 minutes but when we get there uh, looks like we've got to back onto the key and drop the anchor to hold the bow and then get the ropes on the back um, so my only nervousness there is you imagine if you stuff it up and you've got your anchor out so um, if we're not happy when we get over there then we'll be off to the marina again but um, where we get a little bit of assistance and um, they tie you onto a mooring line so yeah, it's going to be an interesting day. I think if we're not happy, then we're just going to foot the bill and stay here. Um, but I'll go and have a look anyway, then I'll talk to the agent. Not even sure if customs are available tomorrow, um, which means we possibly have to wait right through till Monday. But um, anyway, we'll go around and have a look and uh, see what it's like. Yeah, 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 it was good that you stopped 
going round, right? Yeah. Okay, so this is quite momentous after almost three months in Turkey for me and two months for Fiona. We are, for the last time, taking down the Turkish flag. Pass me that one over, Marky. In our new home for probably the next, potentially up to three months, but I suspect we'll be a bit nervous about using too much Schengen time up for that. But at least, at the very least, for the next month. We have the Greek flag, so here we come Greece. Now the thing is that it is a bit of a faux pas to put this flag up when you're on the dock in Turkey. That's offensive because it's supposed to be A, the Turkish flag up there, and B, it should always be higher than the New Zealand flag. So what we're going to do is just get this ready and then we won't actually, given the relations between Greece and Turkey, we won't actually stick it up. Otherwise, um, that could just be a little bit too much for them. And they might um, have a hissy fit. Anyway, at the end of the day, we're going to give it a go how we think we should do it. Um, 
and I think the Springer line needs to just be a little bit further back. So I will talk to John about that, my super yacht captain yeah, and that's tutor a good idea in Nelson. In my head, and like I was trying to say to Mark with my mathematical background, I was asking, saying to him, if I'm releasing this rope, what I, my my understanding was that it would start moving back onto the wall. But he was sure with the way the wind was, it was going to move away from the wall. Um, but it moved towards the wharf. So yep. Mark jumped off and pushed the boat out. And um, all is good. It's good that we can talk about these things and working out what works and what doesn't. So we are now heading over to Coz, which is about a 45 minute journey. And we can see where we're going. We've got our lovely new cups that fit in the cup holder so that we can have our drinks. We've got our drinks. We've got um, our water, we've got nibbles, so we don't need to move from this area, um, and we can just ride it out. So, On our way. Here we are. So here we are coming into Kos in Greece. Greek flags up, which is great. And following sea today with a forecast of 1.2, 1.3 metres. So um, unbelievable difference having the following sea of course in the Marlborough Sounds you don't notice it that much you still did notice it but again four or five years ago so um, I've um, read about it in the past but um, yeah what a difference it makes so comfortable and there are the stabilizers I'll just cover that up you can kind of see on there how active they are now when the system started up today leaving it defaulted into auto so um, we had to change it back to manual in order to get the stabiliser fins working how we wanted them. So yep, as always we're just continuing to learn and um, we're making good progress. So coming into Kos, we're going into the Old Harbour which is just going to be gorgeous. Don't know how much I'll be able to show you because um, it might be a bit busy. But it looks like we have to drop the anchor off the bow and back into our berth and we got about 15 to 18 knots wind blowing. So pretty interesting, it's the first time for us. Um, we're probably gonna park right down under the castle. So I'm thinking there, there'll be almost no wind, but we're all set up with the ropes. Um, I'm gonna do it from upstairs and uh, we can operate the windlass from up there so we can drop the anchor. And all the ropes from upstairs. we're gonna get Fiona to do down the back is the ropes <laughs> and wanna make sure we got someone to help us on the wharf so uh, about to call them up and we'll see if somebody's at home cost marina cost marina awanui nz awanui nz over cost marina cost marina awanui nz awanui nz on channel 77 over cost marina this is cost marina we need you over awanui nz awanui nz two minutes from Mandraki Harbour, just entering the entrance now. Okay, Captain, you will see me, I give you assistance, over. Oh, how I wish we had a camera up for that. So here we are at Kos. Look at it. This is where we are. We're parked on the waterfront. at the city or town of Kos. Now coming in, if we'd had a camera on the back of it, I think we would have got a million views because we had to, pretty windy, we had to try and go on and off about 10 times, our first time putting the anchor out the front and the guy assisting us at one point threw his hands in the air and said just go away. So um, I ignored that and backed in again but luckily between him and Fiona down the back we managed to get ourselves connected to the wharf and the real thing that I learnt from it is you've got to put the anchor out about 50 metres out the front looking at the pictures I thought you only had to put it out about 20 metres and as Fiona said um, we probably should have done some YouTube googling don't you think sweetie? Yes before we came in here but anyway um, it was pretty challenging pretty windy um, the guy helping Fiona felt very sorry for her <laughs> and um, yeah he basically said um, I'm sorry you have him as a husband so 
<laughs> anyway. I think Mark did well though. But it's 11 o'clock in the morning and I'm stuffed. So we're going to yeah, go to customs. Yeah. I'm coming back to have a sleep. Yeah, we are so oh tired God. now. Or the a mental whole, drain on mental that. Drain. <laughs> or a whole huge. bottle of wine. Because uh, not bottle only wine. That, I think a bottle of wine sounds good. Because not only that, when we were coming in, Mark decided to go upstairs. And unbeknown to me, because I'm staying down here on the back deck, he had no steering. No, I had steering. The oh. problem is when you swap control to the top, um, I think it would pay to do it a bit further out. But of course, it was a bit choppy out there. And when you swap over, you go to idle and all that sort of thing. So it gets pretty sloppy. So anyway, lessons learned. And that was one pretty challenging docking. But we're here. And now we have to go and get ourselves through all the port formalities. So um, legally, we're not allowed in Greece yet. But anyway, we shall see what happens. We'll report back. Okay, so um, we've just asked and apparently customs is closed today and tomorrow. So they said for us to go down and see the police. So we'll go and see the police and see if we're allowed to set foot in Greece. Otherwise, it will be back to the boat. Okay, so the marina people are lovely. They said let them know when we know how long we want to be here for. Beautiful wisteria all over the castle. A few flowers out already. It's quite early actually. Anyway, there's the old castle. And that would have been a, a gate no doubt or something. And this is where we go to see the police. Okay, so we've found the right place. Now let's see what happens, eh? So, wrong place, eh? So, apparently, Customs, Customs is open and we have to go to the other end of the port. So, yeah, plot thickens. Okay, so we've been to Customs and we've been to Immigration and now we're being sent back to the port police, which is back by the boat. We have to get a transit log first. And we've been given the piece of paper for that, but that gets done through the port police. Once we've been to the port police, bear in mind we are now walking on Greek soil, or on European soil, and we have not been stamped in. But they're all very helpful and they're all very understanding. So we head back now to the port police, get our paperwork, and then we come back to immigration, get our passport stamped, and then we go to customs, and then we can forget about all this for probably at least a month. But the problem has been that because we don't have a transit log, we've been shipped around from port to, around from place to place. Because the book says customs, uh, sorry, passport, customs, port police. But now we are doing port police first. Well, yeah, but that's assuming you've got a transit log, eh? That's it. Yeah, so that's the so thing. That's and that's what you'd normally get off the agent. So, so that's anyway. What we're learning. Yep, we're going back down the street we came up through the one set of traffic lights that are in Kos and then we find the port police and um, this is cool bit of exercise and we're learning okay we found it that is the port police and the entrance is down here and off to the right and the nice thing is the sign in there said welcome Let's see how welcome we are. Port Authority of Kos. There we go. Can't get much more emphatic than that. We've now walked over there and back. We'll be doing it again. Okay, so that was successful. We now have a stamped crew list. And the man there said we now have to go back to customs and back to passport control and they will issue the transit log which we then have to bring back here and he signs that as well so not sure why we couldn't get the transit log the last time we were over at the passport and customs area but anyway back we go again over there from whence we came okay, so that is cool so we have just gone through immigration i'm going to stay in here because it's out of the wind 
So we've just been through immigration and Fiona and I are now all stamped in and the lady, lovely lady, who is the immigration but they have police uniforms on, she stamped our crew list and now we go to customs to get the transit log so that's going to be quite easy and what we've been told by her is that until we leave Schengen we don't have to go through this process again. So all we need to clarify now is, if we head into Albania, ah, then we're leaving Schengen. Yes. So when we go into Albania, we have to go through this process, and then if we were going then back into, say, Italy yep. or Croatia, we do it again as well. But then we'll be pros at it. Oh, we're yeah, going to be so pros. Right. So I'm getting my head around this now, and, um, and it's I'm going to do... Like doing it, is it? Oh, no, totally. I'm going to do a video on it so that um, others following understand very very and clearly. I'm so pleased you gave it a go Mark. Yeah that's right eh? you got to give it a go. Okay so back to the customs area which appears locked. So we go round to the port again where customs are on because the ferries come over from Turkey. All right we're back at the port and we've been summarily dispatched from here. Um, we obviously interrupted their breakfast and a ferry is arriving soon so they don't want to know us so they have asked us to go back to where we just came from maybe that's why people use agents but I just want to try or we just want to try the process out because I'm sure once we've got a handle on it wherever we go it will get easier and easier while we wait to go and see customs we've ordered 500 litres of fuel that's one euro 75 per litre so a bit more expensive than turkey but we just weren't happy about going on to the fuel dock in turkey so we talked about it and we just decided if it's going to cost what it's going to cost but anyway um, we've been round to the other marina and what have we bought sweetie a hose which we desperately need and it's apparently a really good hose the lady and what is so special lovely, about this hose that when you put it away you just twist it like that and it stays like that it doesn't get affected by the sun um it's all round really good hose and it's a yachting one and 15 year thing oh 15 year guarantee oh that shows it inside what it yeah. is so yeah anyway so we, we took her word for it said. i know we wanted to get one that was in a real a but no one's got them we need a hose, we've got to start cleaning this boat, and then we found those, which are fantastic. So Mark got them in black, I got them in blue. Just slip on and stuff for on the boat itself, what a, else did we get? A brush and some hose fittings. That's right, handheld brush, because last yeah, time we needed, that, didn't we? we needed that, otherwise sometimes the long pole's just too much. And that's but where, is that where we came from? That's, yeah, that's just to the east of Bottoms, there's the castle at Kos, we're in behind there. And then across there is where we came from yesterday. Okay, so I just have to show you this. Um, I just noticed we've got all these lovely park benches along here, but then I noticed that this one here had solar panels. And the world really has gone mad because this is set up to be able to charge your devices. So I'm going to try it just to see if the theory works and the world is as mad as what I think it is. And it's funny, you know, not surprisingly. So what do we got there? It's not charging. I will plug this in. And it's not charging. So what would you call that? A complete and utter failure on the part of some council that decided they were going to put charging stations on their seats but they don't work let's try this side you know what I can't help but feel this is where the world has come to that we have to now have a park bench that has a charging station but unfortunately it doesn't work so I'm gonna go and have a look under here see if it's a result no oh there's a problem look ah oh, golly golly gosh that has become disconnected so let's just see if that turned it on 
No. So, obviously not enough contact being made. Works over here, and that side is just not connected. And, ah, okay, it's one of those fittings. You can't undo a screw and tighten it up. You've actually got to pull it off and reconnect the whole thing. So, I'm not going to do that, because given we're not even checked into grease yet I probably shouldn't start fiddling with municipal fixtures anyway that's official the world has gone mad absolutely mad and those boys walking away from said seat are possible explanation as to why the electrical side of those don't work very well because two of them decided that they were part of the seat so they sat on them and you want to see them bend so I suspect they're not the first and when it's crowded here people sit on them and it's broken the wires but anyway crazy. all right so we start pumping and he showed me the meter to begin with was zero. How many litres can this truck take? 1,000? 2,000? This one thousand. One thousand, huh? Yeah. Yep. One thousand. Siga, siga, Ali. Easy, easy, Ali. Siga, siga. Anix it. Amen. 500, please, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Petrol expensive in Greece, huh? Yeah. It's expensive, yeah. Yes, yeah. Athens better? Where you, where you from? New Zealand. New Zealand. Uh, yeah, it's good. good. Oh, thank you for coming out on a Sunday. Yeah. So, Marky, what are you doing apart from wetting me? I'm using the Wait, I haven't door. done the. Have we done the whole oh. door? Have you not done those? No, I don't think I have. I'm bloody getting rid of shit. Now we've got a high pressure high. It's so exciting, eh? Oh, so it does it so well. We, the basic dirt. we bought the beautiful hose. We did, it's a great hose. And the gun, and then we've got water from, oh my goodness, municipal water. 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 And I'll tell you from, what, they got great pressure. From green. that thing there, that uh, blue thing, and great it's pressure. Pack, What's that? Blue thing, it's called a pack. Oh, is that a pack? Oh, it is, yeah, but it's got other stuff on it too. So anyway, um, I've got to get back to it, so here we go. Okay, so off on a bit of an expedition today. I am heading off to get the oil for the um, engine oil change. And I checked out the oil change system this morning. My goodness, you could not get simpler. Um, basically, it's got its own pump. And you're either taking oil out or you're putting oil in and there's a hose there for it so if it's going out it comes out of that hose when you're putting it back in you stick that hose into the can and it goes back in so um anyway watch the space it sounds and looks very simple to me but one never knows with mechanical things and not exactly my forte but anyway um yeah not going to do it yet we'll wait till we get to santorini because i want to get up to the 100 hours but I figure between here and Santorini, oil is only going to get more expensive. Oop. Make sure I check out the traffic going the right way here. Anyway, so I'm going to go off and get 40 litres of that. So that'll be about a thousand bucks. Um, don't cry, you American people. I know things are so much cheaper over there. And uh, once we get somewhere decent, I'll get a backup supply of it as well. I've got some oil on board, but certainly not enough for the engine change um, we checked the weather out yesterday and we decided we're going to go on Tuesday um, which is tomorrow but um, overnight the weather forecast has changed and I think it's suitable to go today so I'll get the oil I'm doing a bit of shopping um, and then about lunchtime we might head off we've got about a five hour run up to the next island which is halfway to Santorini and then we can head into Santorini tomorrow where for those of you that like her, daughter Renee is turning up. And it's going to be her birthday soon, so apparently mum and dad are taking her out for dinner in Santorini. Which suits me just fine, because we were going to go there anyway. Okay, so, um, 
I'll report a bit later on, eh? Well, this place is about as mad as New Zealand and I suspect the rest of the world is going. So, as you can see here, the cycleway going both ways is about the same width as the pedestrian footpath and in a lot of places it's wider, like up here by this building look. Well, I've counted, not one push bike's gone past. I've gone past 10 people going my way and 15 people going the other way. So, go figure, the world's gone mad. Okay, that was cool. So, for 110 euros, what's that? Well, let's say $200. Um, got 20 litres of 1540 R4 engine diesel oil. Um, and that's about oh, 20 euros less per 5 litre than most places. So, um, yep, I'm happy with that. Um, no doubt we'll find it a lot, lot cheaper in Athens. But, hey, we're in COS and the engines need looking after. So, I am now just going to go and buy a little hose fitting. Go and do some shopping in the supermarket and then come back and get a taxi because there ain't no way I'm carrying two 20 litre containers of oil for one and a half kilometres. Mission successful. Right, Marky, so what are you doing? First smoothie, we have um, orange juice. And an orange pulp. An orange pulp, banana, kiwi fruit, strawberries, blueberries, a bit of yogurt and a bit of coconut milk. Now I'm going to try and get this thing to go without spraying stuff everywhere. So explain what happened last time you tried to make well, a smoothie. Well, I'll show you. So that's supposed to go and it doesn't because it doesn't go over the little knuckles that are under there. So what we've got to do is just undo that a little bit and you just keep undoing it until it goes on, it switches on. Got a little bit above the max line there, which is a bit naughty. Does not work. The way it's meant to. If you take it off and then show people that it is working when you press those things down. And then when you push these down, you're going to two of them. It, it works. works. And then what the problem is with the little thing is that those those there, yeah. those little knuckles there. Yeah. They come out as they you tighten they up. They sit too far. No, they're they're fixed. So they've got to ride up over that to push it down. So you push it on. So we know it works. You just gotta do that. But they lock into it. If this is up just a little bit. <laughs> Looking good, Marky. Right. Look at that guy. And I, I've got a funny feeling because it's plastic. It'll probably just walk, wear the edge off ever so slightly, and eventually it'll just flick Go over. into place. And just try if it goes into place straight away no, now when you finish it. No. Oh, okay. I'm happy with my smoothie. Lovely. Well, enjoy. It's actually a bit of work doing a smoothie. Absolutely. But we have time. So it's worth it. So I'd just like to point out that finished, it's about five millimetres above the max line, so that's pretty good. And there's probably enough here for two, but I'm going to have it, apparently. And here's the big test. We shall see. Well, Charles, I don't everybody. get to try it. You get to try it, but do you want me to split it in two? No, no. Oh, that's a winner. It's a winner? It's a winner. This is a man who doesn't eat any fruit normally, so it's one way of getting fruit into him. Oh, my goodness. I want you to try that. Hang on. Be honest. You tell me if that's not the nicest smoothie you've ever tried. Very nice, Martin. It's good, eh? Mm -hmm. So that's a good recipe. Mm. Cool. Remember that recipe, eh? That's good. Along with everything else you have to remember. 
and we're heading away today. Mark's just doing the anchor rope. We've got the guy on the wharf ready to do our other ropes. And then we'll be heading off. Well, here we are departing Coffs out through the harbour entrance and first time bringing the anchor in. Yep. Santorini or the island before it, I keep forgetting the name, here we come. So we're underway and Mark is on the engine room, just checking things. We tend to do that when we're underway for a bit. I'll sit at the helm and Mark will go down and check the things that need checking. And I can see him there in the engine room. Um, and here we are. Today on the weather charts we were told it was anything between 0.3 and 1.1. I'm currently estimating out there it's 0.5. Um, we are, when we left Cos, we were going into the sea, into a headwind, so it was a bit bang bang. And now we've turned and we have got a side sea rather than a following sea, but she's holding pretty good, especially with the stabilizers working. And over there is the island of Cos, and we're just following it all the way up to its tip and then we will continue on and if things are going alright we'll try and make it to Santorini though that's about a good 10 hours otherwise we'll pop into an island So there we go, there's our first day with a um, well it's really a beam sea to be honest um, and about 1.2 to 1.5 metres um, remember bottom of the trough to top of the crest um, and quite a different ride you know you have to focus quite a bit to make sure that you don't lose the horizon otherwise uh, you've got the real potential to get a little bit seasick um, so mother is very much focused on that up the front but she's doing really well and um, yeah quite sloppy water out here so into it is that bang 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 when you're just crashing into the waves and behind is an absolutely gorgeous ride and from the beam it's a bit roly-poly and sloppy but um, Nordhaven handling it beautifully so we're about oh, halfway now between um, the island of Kos and our next Island, which is our destination for the day. Once again, I can't remember the blinking name of the friggin' island. Oh my goodness. And we had a choice of a cute little town with a marina or um, this isolated bay. So tonight we're going to take the isolated bay. Um, and then hopefully tomorrow off to Santorini. Well, you know, looking out there, you look in the camera, it doesn't feel like the camera actually picks up what it's like but we reckon there's actually two meter swells between the top of the crest and the bottom so it's been a pretty interesting run for us certainly haven't had anything like this before and it's totally beam on so pretty sloppy as well and the autopilot at times swinging 40 degrees before it is able to correct the heading change that the bow's taking so I mean when you look out there now well there you go there's one we're down in a bit of a trough It'd be really interesting to see when we put this on the bigger screen whether it shows the height of those troughs and crests but from here they look pretty reasonable in size and don't worry about that little alarm going in the background that's just telling us the ship's passed by behind us so we're happy about that anyway thought you'd be interested Nisos something or other with a very long name so notice there's no wind noise because we're doing nine knots and the wind behind us is nine knots so 
very pleasant from that point of view but quite an uncomfortable ride pretty amazing landscape it's sort of a just a close cropped tundra on well rock by the look of it but quite quite smooth not jagged and apparently this whole region was absolutely famous for sponge fishing mussels the best mussels in greece apparently and it's been totally fished out now all gone um, still some good crayfish around and not surprising looking at those rocky shores but um yeah an amazing place now that we've turned into the bay and we've got a following sea the whole ride has changed anyway looks like it's going to be a lovely spot up here there is a taverna and if it's open apparently they serve great fish i think we might treat ourselves to dinner it's a bit windy in here today so um, i've cut the noise out and dubbing over but oh what a beautiful bay it's pretty shallow um, down to about two meters two and a half meters um, deep um, but we had the whole bay to ourselves uh, not much going on the taverna was closed unfortunately but man we just settled down in here um, absolutely beautiful and lovely sunset to finish the day okay so it's Wednesday morning the 10th of April and last night we stayed in Nisos Estipalaya and um, right up in this top corner there there's a gorgeous little spot it's focusing there by the look of it really nice spot and we were happy to stay here if necessary for two days but it looks like the weather's going to be much the same for the next two days and there's a nice island that is on the way to Santorini that's where we're going eventually we're going to meet Renee there and a nice little island here and we're going to try and stop at a Nuffy which is a very cute little port apparently a couple of anchorages um, the weather out there today it's blowing about 17 knots we've got up to a meter waves again so we'll just have to see how that goes it's on the beam but it's going to be like that both days um, we know we can cope with that um, so we're going to head off and if for any reason we're not happy then we can just come back here but um, yeah it's three hours down to the next or three hours 50 down to the next island and that will just leave us two hours and a half to get on to Santorini and we're that much closer which is cool so um, yeah nice stay here I had a good sleep did you have a good sleep sweetie? you're not bad okay and we are on our way I don't know if you can see it, but there's a cute little ruin over there that's a very, very old building by the look of it. It's certainly pretty amazing. Little bays you come into around here. Very rocky as you can see. A lot better look going out than coming in yesterday. and again too much wind noise uh, we just got to get these lapel mics sorted out i think we have to put them on and keep them on all day but weather today much the same as yesterday pretty sloppy from the beam and coming into a neathy absolutely um, stark cliff top and on the top there you can see this really ancient monastery well it was a bit of a cock up and it was my fault so we're in uh, nisos afina um, turned around nicely in the harbour, it's pretty shallow, only 2.5 um, deep and um, got the bow in which was nice but then um, got a rope on which was great, well done Fiona and then I let the tail start moving off and I seemed to struggle to keep the tail on so um, yeah, a lot more work to do there yet and um, but at the end of the day we got it on without anybody losing their rag and here we are in this lovely place so we're going to go and check out and see if we can get some lunch and um, chicken for the night tomorrow we'll head off to 
Santorini. So the big debate at the moment is, just up there a little bit on the hillside, is that the walkway up to Athena's little town. Hmm, a bit difficult to tell. I think it is, but if you go up there and it's not, then that's a pain. So we figure let's do the road and we can always come back by the path. Right, well that didn't last long. Very, very obvious that the walkway is up there because the road heads off away from the little town on the top. We'll come so, down to the bottom here, turn right and head back up the pathway. Apparently it's only half an hour, so we shall see. But it looks nicely lit too, so obviously people go up there for dinner maybe and then walk down at night to their boats because a man at this place is set up for boats. Cute little, I don't know what you'd call it, cellar hopefully, built into the cliff. Walking to the village, take two. Well, already I would not want to be the person doing this concreting because I suspect over here they have no hydraulic concrete pumps. I mean, you can hear me puffing, it's pretty steep. So, I hate to think how they did all this, but no doubt with little quads or four-wheel drives, Maybe even the same with a little bit of a tractor. What of you? What of you? That's where the road went. So we went all the way over there, came back on itself, and then did another U-turn right up to the top there. So even though we've had to walk twice the difference so far, that would have been a dumb move carrying on up there. It's only when you climb hills that you realise how unfit you are. Been doing lots of walking, but nothing on hills. So, yeah, I think I'm going to sleep well tonight. I think we might find a beer at the top here if we can. Pretty barren land, although it looks like it from a distance, but once you get to it, it's actually pretty well covered in vegetation where it is, and there is literally just rock underneath it so I would suppose these are extremely hardy plants but anyway interestingly as we get to the top the wind's gone around to the northwest and down in the bay there it's west southwest it's obviously curving around the island but also going over the top of it here so definitely west southwest where we're moored anyway um, so as per usual, around islands, the wind direction changes. One, two, three, four, five, six levels. I mean, what a building project, and all carved out of this ground. I wonder how far they had to drill in, if at all, whether it's just anchored by the sheer weight of the foundations. Hmm. When you're looking down below, they look precarious, but now that you're actually up with them, they look okay. I love them. Really like the style. Classic Middle Eastern build or North African build. Everything out of concrete. Plenty of reinforcing. Lots of pillars, concrete floors, and then you fill all the gaps in with those bricks. And then the plaster is set to work. And you can see there where it's started and not yet been finished being plastered that's what give it, give it the finishing touch oh. there we go wonder what that toes on this island no idea
very interesting. I don't know if you can read that, but effectively the hammer and sickle there. And it says Anafi, a glorious island from 1924 to 1943. And from 1943 to 1949, hundreds of vanguard militants of the people, members, cadre, and supporters of the Communist Party of Greece, KKE, lived here in exile for their ideas and struggles. We honour their sacrifice, courage, and unyielding stance. This was put up in June 2022 by the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Greece. I wonder what happened between 1943 and 1946. Fair to say, I suspect a lot of people here still very much on the left. One could get horribly lost around here. There's a tavern. There's a cafe. But they don't open till seven. And now it is quarter to four. So, looks like we're going to go back down to the marina. Well, one good thing is, we got dinner being cooked for us tonight, so that is just magic. I think the answer is you just keep going down. Hello! Funny the people you walk into around here. Down we go. Steps again. No counting mark. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Better to talk to you lot. Man, it's hot. I can see why they do nothing between two o'clock and four o'clock and three o'clock and seven o'clock when it comes to a pub. But by jingos, I bet by that time people are ready for a drink. Oh, no, I didn't come up that way. I didn't go past that weed. Remember this pile of planks? Austria, yep, that was the house down by the road, and from there it is easy. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, don't count, talk to the people, Mark. So keep going, keep going. Rooms to let, it's such an isolated little island. Although there are ferries over, it must just all crank up in the summer, but man. 12, 13, 14, actually I can't hurt, I just can't stop. Anyway, wind's coming back, so I better shut up because I know that all annoys you. That is a beautiful view on the way down. So, I wonder why the Mediterranean people don't open between two o'clock and four o'clock, let me think. It might be that it's too hot. So coming from New Zealand, we just think, you know what, you can walk up to a little town at the top of the hill and there'll be a cafe open, there'll be a bar open. We got up there and there's absolutely nothing open. And I think we're gonna to have to adapt to this Mediterranean lifestyle if we want it to be pleasurable. Now, the last couple of days, or the days in Kos, about three in the afternoon, I really started feeling tired. I mean, I get up at five in the morning, and I had a snooze, and then I felt much better for the rest of the day. So that's kind of what they do here as well. Ah, bloody wind! It'll die off. Be patient. Come on, be patient. There we go. It's going. Yeah. So you know. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. So um, we're going to have to start thinking about, in the middle of the day, slowing down a little bit. And the thing is, we try and head off wherever we're going early, and we're tending to do three to five hour trips, maybe six. So that means you're going to be arriving about lunchtime, one o'clock, which is when it's really hot. So I think we just got to relax on the boat and wait till four or five, and then if we've got the urge, go and explore then, or maybe get a cab somewhere when we know stuff's opening. We'll get used to the times, and then we can walk home at night or something just to make sure we're getting that bit of exercise. But, um, yeah, a bit dumb, really. 
all the way up there. I was so ready for a beer. <laughs> I wanted a beer and you get up there and nobody's open. So I'm walking down with just a wincy bit of vigour because I have still got three FS left. 500ml cans of beer. So I'm going to have a beer when I get down to the boat. Another lesson learned for Mark. Back at the bottom, thank goodness for that. You might notice I'm walking just a little bit faster. That is because I know there's a cold beer on the boat. So I am heading there as quickly as I can. Huge amount of work being done here. It was all done over the last two or three years. A lot of concrete work. No doubt a ship came in to do that. I don't know. There's a ton of sand off here. Maybe they use that. But lovely little spot. Gosh. These places built just below that cliff. And honestly, walking down the track, you could just crumble away bits of the cliff. And there were stones, like 10 kilo stones, sitting on the side of the path. So you look at that up there, it's right above the tavern. Just wonder. Hmm. Not sure I'd be happy about that. Well, we gave it a go. That is that. Fish soup. Yum yum. Look at Oh, and they've set us a table out on the veranda. How wonderful is that? <laughs> oh, isn't it cool? Look at that. That is just gorgeous. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> oh, isn't it special? Times like this, I wish I'd bought stuff from home. I know. That we could just give them. Look at that. How cool is that? Hello! Thank you so much! <laughs> what are you doing? It's nice, Winnie. It's lovely. So when we arrived today, we were the first people we spoke to, and they've got a taverna, but it doesn't open till next month. And we asked if we'd get a meal, and then she spoke in Greece to, Greek to her husband, and then she spoke back to us. She goes, I could do you my famous fish soup tonight you come back and we've come back and they've set up a whole table outside for us so, so here we are in this beautiful tiny wee marina and they've set the table and they're going to serve us a beautiful well i'm sure it will be beautiful traditional fish dinner we are so lucky and that's our view Show and the there's view. our view yeah Well, isn't that lovely, eh? Yeah. Cheers, sweetie. Cheers. Lovely red and lovely yep. white. Yeah, lovely dry white. Lovely. It goes well with all the salt over my face from the long walk we did today. That was a good walk, <laughs> eh? <laughs> you tired? Tired. Yeah, me too. It's like Camino-ing again. It's like what? It's like Camino-ing again. Camino-ing. <laughs> Been on the Camino. What's the Camino? <laughs> the 700 kilometres we did from... France, Saint Jean Pierre de Port, to Santiago. Over the Pyrenees and across Spain. Yeah. We and love Spain, don't we? We did. And then we did the one from Portugal, from Lisbon up to Santiago. Yep. And the neat thing was that I just ordered a dry white wine everywhere we went in Spain and Portugal and I was never disappointed. And That's it was normally way. about two euros and you got a full glass. Not just a dribble. Cool, eh? So, yeah. So lovely. Pretty cool. That is definitely a seafood dish. <laughs> and the plate, apparently, here, is for the bones. So we need to be careful. And in the next video, we go to the beautiful Santorini. Had a on Daughter the Renee <laughs> arrives back on board and she's oh, got a little bit wobbly. to say about Dad's what? driving oh in the tender. Then we have it. the most magical meal out. I mean, it was probably the best ever. Mark gets into an engine oil change. Just support engine first, saving the starboard for later. Don't want to do both at once, but a few lessons learned there, especially how not to use a knife. And what seemed a very simple process, 
a line out the stern onto the rocks gets quite complicated, resulting in another swim for Mark.